you've been applying tirelessly for various jobs without even having the opportunity to be invited for an interview. What if I tell you that the ATS, what we call the applicant tracking system, is the giant standing between you and being invited for the job interview of your dream job. If you're ready to beat the ATS system, this is that one video you want to watch till the very end. Please hit the like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do so. In this video, I'm going to tell you all the tricks and cracks of the ATS system and possibly we'll get your resume to the yes queue. Hey everyone, if you see me for the first time, my name is Benji and thank you so much for watching the video. In this channel, I talk about everything travel, ranging from scholarship opportunities, job opportunities, and you know, every how, every single way you can travel abroad without necessarily breaking the bank. And of course, where necessary, staying away from agents and lawyers and actually saving that money for the things that really, really matters in your relocation journey. And to all my returning viewers, I want to thank you guys so much. You mean the whole world to me for all your likes, your shares, your comments, every single thing you do on this platform to help me grow. I do not take them for granted. Thank you so much. Now to the big monster of the job application process, it's called the ATS, the application tracking system. Let's see how to fight it in this video. And remember, you cannot fight what you do not understand. So to fight the ATS, you need to understand how the ATS algorithm is programmed. Now, I want you to view the ATS as a scanner in the job application process. So as a scanner, it basically scans through resumes. And from a glance, the ATM is very intelligent to spot an underqualified person by just scanning through their resume. And what the ATM does, if it deems you unqualified, is to stop you from getting to the interview room. So how exactly, what does it look out for? Of course, it spots things like keywords, like experiences and your skill. Yes, it can tell of your experiences, for example, by highlighting, by, you know, looking at the dates you have highlighted from when you have started a particular job to um, when you have stopped doing a particular job. It could tell whether you have the relevant experience. Got it? So despite the ATS being a very intelligent system, the good news, I'm always the good news, is that you can beat the ATS hands down and get yourself to the interview room. Now, how do you do this? By basically and strategically choosing keywords that the ATM is looking for. So how then do you know what keywords that the ATM is programmed to look out for in a particular job? Pay attention to your job description. So by paying attention to the job description, you're able to deduce what exactly the employer is looking for. Are they looking for communication skills? Are they looking for um, computer programming skills, data analytics skills, you know, teamwork skills? What exactly are they looking for? Are they looking for leadership skills? You need to know all of this. Now, chat GPT would generate keywords, maybe five or 10, as you have asked her to do, that are core relevant to this world. Now, these keywords that chat GPT has generated for you, you want to use them and infuse them all around your resume okay so let's just go and put in them like that all around your resume you want to make sure that you infuse them into your experience into your accomplishment and into your resume story for example let's say data analysis for example is it's a skill right and you know chat gpt has generated that for you you don't just want to go into your resume writing data analytics you want to make it something that you have worked on and you know you've used that an analytics as a skill and you know you've worked on it you've worked on a project you know infusing data analytics skill and with that you've been able to achieve a result data analytics as a key skill right if generated by chat gpt here's how to infuse it for example into your resume okay don't just go right in that analytics you know show that you've actually used the skill of that analytics sometime in your work and you know you have produced results with this skill so for example you can say things like i led a data analytic initiative and was able to achieve a sales increase of about 50 percent right that sounds like you've used the skill and with the skill you've been able to achieve something you've made an accomplishment with the skill when you infuse your skills like that it sounds more realistic and most likely the ats is going to be smiling to that so after you have mastered your keywords and you have worked on them like i have instructed earlier the next thing you want to pay attention to is the formatting of your resume very important now with formatting i know you would almost be tempted to believe that ATS would love it when you put in all those complicated designs, graphics, tables, and all whatnot. But mm -mm. what if I tell you that my ATS would love it when you keep it simple? Please, if you want to be friends with the ATS, leave all those complicated designs, all those tables, all those complicated graphics 
Leave them out of your resume. Rather than your complicated designs, you are safe as sticking with standardized word processing features like bullet points and clear and consistent headings for each of your sections. So at this stage, I'm sure you understand that Mr. ATS loves it really simple. So even with your font style and size, you need to keep them really professional and simple. So for your font style, for example, you can choose uh, styles like Cambria or Calibri. Okay, those ones are really professional and you can keep your, si your font size to at least 11 points. So if you stick to this format, what then happens is that it makes it easy for the ATS to read. And of course, the human who would hopefully progress your resume to the next stage, which is the interview stage. But if you don't keep to this format, what happens is the ATS doesn't even read them at all. So you're actually disqualified without even starting the process at all. So still with formatting, I'd love you to use very clear and standard sections like contact information, professional summary, skills, education and work experience i know you are finding this video really helpful i know it and i can feel it this is that video you really want to share and let me know in the comment section how helpful you're finding this video and just say thank you nj the video is really helpful thank you for all the tips and give the video a flat like and if you're yet to subscribe to the channel please do and let me know in the comment section if you subscribe remember this video is that one that you want to share so let's continue in this okay we're still talking about formatting and with formatting I would also want you to put your um your resume in sections okay so you want to put it in sections like um contact information um professional summary work experience education and skills and with your sections as well with the headings make sure to use very simple and clear headlines okay for example you can just say um work experience that's that's enough and that's very understandable and clear okay don't try to confuse the ats okay because when the ats gets confused it would rather not read them at all so don't try to make it fancy or you know anything like that maybe trying to say um a um, professional journey okay just keep it work experience that is simple and that is very understandable moving forward okay now trying to showcase to the ats that you're not just a good candidate but the best candidate okay i love to talk about highlighting your relevant skills and experience in the section i'd love you to have something in mind relevance is key okay so whatever you're doing okay it's not all about so sometimes you could have so many so many you, you could have been working for so many years and have worked in so many different places but remember you always 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 want to highlight those experiences that are relevant to the job you apply you're currently applying to because that is what the ATS want to see so it's not just about numbers it's about relevance I want you to keep that in mind okay and while you are highlighting the skills and experiences that are relevant to the current job it's very important to pay attention to numbers okay make sure that whatever you're writing you know like it shows an accomplishment and it's result driven okay and this is where your chat gpt can be very helpful as well if you are struggling to write these uh, experiences or your skills in such a way that they are more impactful and result driven you can get chat gpt to do that for you so you can put in that statement ask chat gpt to make them more impactful and result driven for you and you'll get something better to add up to your resume the thing about spending time you know giving time to your resume and actually you know uh, presenting it in such an organized way it, it speaks a volume about you right it speaks a lot about your interest that interest sometimes you know is something that they are looking for it may be something that is there in you than every other random person who is just looking for a position i would like to summarize with this point and this is actually the most important part for me at the end of the day after you have used chat gpt get all the helpful tips i like you to put that little touch of human in your resume it's very important because it's not all about ticking the boxes for the ats after the ats it's actually going to get to the table of another human who's going to go through it and then you know make that first contact with you or the connection so that connection that human connection has to be there so after you have gotten all this help from chat gpt you need to bring it down and make sure you you know you put in a bit of life and a bit of personal story i don't mean you writing a stays but you know even when while you write your accomplishment put your accomplishment make sure there's a bit of human touch if you get what i mean right you know that way it keeps a relevance in the mind of the person who gets to read your resume and you know they have that even they even though they haven't met you before they have that connection that human connection with you and you know and they are grieving you know to get in contact with you so it's always very important to leave 
that human touch so yeah guys i'd love to stop here i hope the tips were very helpful let me know in the comment section what you think about this video did you found them helpful and did you enjoy them so far um this is that one video like i said earlier on but you have to share with somebody uh, that you love so much and that you know is a job as parent and have been struggling with some of the sometimes you actually struggle with distance but you don't actually know that they are your problem so if you've been doing it probably don't know why you don't understand why um you're probably not even getting any attention at all maybe perhaps you want to look at the way you have been doing your cv and actually see if you're doing them the right way i'm gonna leave a link okay below just for a sample cv you can have look through them and um you know probably that could be a guide for you doing your own cv please be kind to share be kind to like the video and i see you in the comment section below and i see you next time in my next video until then stay safe and stay out of trouble bye